Hey guys, if you like to party and the stop block is what you're trying to go fast on, we have a new brand for you here. Stop block the world. Go to the link in the video and support us. It should eventually lead to t-shirts, hoodies, and other apparel. What's up guys? Uh, other day, um, with the machine shop and I got the block back. Check it out. You can see they filled it. Um, if our scale was accurate, uh, we gained about four pounds with the block filler, which is I thought it would be a lot heavier than that, but it wasn't, so that's cool. Um, you can see the one spot, they kind of touched it up. That's literally, they, literally, that's literally JB Weld. And then that's, that's one something they can hit with a bit just to knock it down. We're not actually worried about that spot. Uh, anything other than aesthetics, honestly, because where the fire rings are going to work is they will seal uh, on the sleeve itself. So um, about to throw the crank in this thing, and then uh, I will start... Uh, popping the rods and pistons in, uh, you know, I, I do have to put new rings on it, so I got new rings here. And like you can see, uh, if you're new to this, you know, K1 crank, this guy's been 429. I'm not saying it won't break on the next pass, but it's been good. You know, the other one went 450s and tons of passes with no problems. And then, you know, these big old fat rods here and, and these, uh, for what they are, relatively inexpensive pistons. So let's get this thing back together. And for the people who doubt, it says it right there, 5.3. And this is, you can kind of see a little spot right there. You can barely feel it, and my camera is not liking that. Anyways, that's from a few videos back before we got it running when I, where the car had set with uh, water in the cylinder for, you know, almost a year, and uh, caused a little pit right there. But uh, same block, so now we're going to see what we can really do, and uh, assuming no parts fly out of it, I'm definitely curious uh, what we'll be able to push it to. Getting ready to set the crank in. You see we have the ARP main studs. Um, and then the mains have been pinned by uh, tick performance. To other guys we use when we get the uh, blocks pinned. We have them just do that part. Um, you know you want to make sure when you put your mains in that you have your oil holes on the oil side of the block. Because you get your other half of the mains here. And they don't have, uh, kind of hard to see, but they don't have uh, holes in them. So if you get those backwards you're in for a bad time. Another thing we always do is have the machine shop uh, TIG weld the reluctor wheel on so that way you don't have to worry about it spinning. Because if that thing spins and uh, throws off your base timing, it's going to cause some serious issues. So we have the crank torqued in there. Uh, thrust comes in at right at five thousandths, uh, OEM spec. Uh, it's pretty tight. It goes from, uh, you know, all the way from as little as uh, that to 78 so uh, it's a uh, you know thankfully with application like this I don't want to be on the tighter side and we never have issues knocking the thrust out as long as charge pressure stays correct so it'll work good for us it's usually in this range uh, but otherwise she's in there good she spins great so tomorrow, I will uh, start getting the uh, pistons okay, and uh, rods. So here we are, Saturday morning, uh, starting on the uh, assembly here. You know, we got the crank in last night. Um, you know, like like from before, same rods, same pistons. Machine shop check your rods for stretch just to verify everything's good. Uh, so I'm gonna start slapping this guy together. Uh, one thing I like to use when doing this stuff, I pointed out before, is this. Uh, uh, piston ring compressor from BTR. It it even works good, I think, on the 3.78 stuff. But obviously, if we did a lot of 3.78, I would get the actual uh, tool for it too. But you know, 3.8 bore is the primary one I use, and uh, it just makes knocking the rings or piston rod in so easy. Uh, and I really, I mean, for the price, it's, it's worth it compared to the old uh, clamp style ring compressors. But uh, you know, we're going to just uh, start cutting some rings and uh, getting this thing in there. And so we can get uh, one more thing done because there's still a lot to do. On aluminum rods is you'll notice how there are these serrated cuts on the caps. And a lot of OEM rods are what's called crack cap design. But essentially, if you look at it right here, it will not uh, sit flush. You see that? You can tell it's obviously misaligned. Um, if you torque them like that, it's it's you know it's going to have everything wrong. Your clearance is going to be way off, and if and if, and if it spins well, it's going to spin a bearing. 
but if you do it the right way, it walks right in there, and uh, that ensures your proper bearing location. Another thing is, uh, you have to have the right kind of rod bearing. You see how these little aluminum dowels, they help keep the bearing from getting too loose once the rods heat up. And you'll notice uh, these King XP's right here, they have the hole in them already. Um, if you buy bearings that out of hole, you better have a fixture set up to drill them if you need to. Um, another thing on these MGP rods, it recommends that you only use 50 weight oil on the threads. Uh, brand doesn't matter, but this is what I have. And um, that you make sure as well that there's no debris in this area. Uh, I hit it with some brake cleaning and blew it out. I'm going to do it again. But you just want to make sure that way it doesn't potentially throw off the uh, torque readings uh, that you get, or stretch, I should say. But uh, so this is something to note uh, whenever you're putting these kind of rods together. Another thing that's a good idea is to take your ring and just kind of you know go around the groove. And you just want to make sure there's no actual like, spots in it where it catches. If so, that means you got something either debris in there or it's kind of pinched. Um, for these things to operate properly, they need to be able to, you know, basically move re relatively unrestricted. So as you saw, I got these guys set. Um, you know, you want to make sure when you do it, you keep the ends as square as you can. Um, and then I always use a little bit of sandpaper to just knock down the, to make sure it doesn't burst from where you just ground them down. Sometimes you don't have to ground much. Uh, and then sometimes, uh, you know, you got, some rings have a lot more overlap on them, I guess you'd say. They're not really overlap, but there's a lot of extra. Uh, but now I'm going to give them on the pistons and the orientation I prefer. And then I will pop the uh, upper rod cap in and, uh, and, and knock this thing down the hole. So like I was telling you, this uh, BTR spring compressor is awesome. You know, it kind of centers itself on the groove because it's got a little lip on it. You know, put your rings on there, whatever your preferred lube is, and and that was a little more aggressive than I wanted to do because I can't really control with one hand, but you see how well it works. And uh, yeah, so normally it takes a, it's a, bit, it's a pain if you use the old style compressor. So these things are uh, absolutely great. So now that the uh, piston and rod is uh, forcefully in the bore, uh, I'm using this rod stretch gauge to uh, torque the, the uh, um, rod bolts. Uh, what this does is it will measure, you know, as it says, rod stretch based off of uh, your, you know, your zero point, and then, and then of course, when you're done. Uh, it's 55, 65 thousandths is the spec on these, and uh, that uh, the reason these people stretch is because torque. Uh, specs can vary based off the of resistance of the threads, uh, lubricant and stuff like that, but no matter what, rod stretch is going to be rod stretch. So when you get your uh, indicator set, you just you know, lock it down here, and then you will... Uh, another way to do it also is to put a wrench on there, and then kind of... It takes a lot of torque to do these things, so usually I just, I just kind of slide it on and off because... You see I got it set at zero, and then I'll take it out, you know, and then I'll put it back on here, and you know we're at zero again. And of course, you want to check every single one because zero could vary a little bit. All right, guys. So uh, here I am checking deck height. Uh, have this little fixture here, and you know I'm just not, not going to really go through it 100%. But you know, you get the thing at TDC, and I just drop it off, and uh, that's how I would uh, see the difference I got. Uh, based off of what I've seen and also taking into account piston rock looks like uh, I'm gonna get about 65 thousandths head gasket that should give us what we need uh, the uh, you know the LS9 gaskets we had they are 54 thousandths compressed 
So we're going to get a little bit extra uh, thickness there, a little more uh, room for uh, expansion. And also uh, the, uh, the, the fire rings themselves have about 6 thousandths protrusion. So that's going to actually honestly push us up closer to really 70 uh, around the chamber, you know, 70, 71. So uh, there's a little plus or minus there. But uh, that, should, that should alleviate this issue that we had. Uh, and uh, I think we'll be good to go. But overall, the engine, uh, let me turn it back around here. Let me pull this guy off. This thing turns over great. No binds, everything feels smooth. You know, one thing I do when I'm, when I'm doing the engine is I do one at a time. I've seen guys before, I made a mistake years ago, they'll just go ahead and slap everything in uh, or one side or whatever and then but the problem is if you get a if you get something that doesn't feel right well then you got to go through and figure out which one it is but if you just do one at a time then you know you're just going to roll with it uh, and, and you'll, you'll know exactly when your issue is so you can just kind of keep going at it until, you, until something doesn't feel right uh, also, I think I want to switch to a different oil pump. Sammy's got one he's been testing, uh, which is just another melon pump. I have to look at the part number, but uh, try to bump the oil pressure up some just to uh, get up a little bit higher. And uh, Sammy's is really high. I'm not trying to run my that aggressive, but uh, I am trying to get it up some. So uh, I'm going to grab that too. But glad to have this block together. I'm going to get some of these front covers and stuff cleaned off and uh, everything and probably throw the cam and stuff back in it too. We we'll re reuse the same cam because it's, you know, it worked good. We still, I think, have more turbo left. Still not, you know, barely one-to-one -one on back pressure. So I don't want to, I honestly don't want to change the cam yet. I think this cam is working good uh, and we can definitely get some more out of it. So as you saw earlier, we have the block together. Uh, put the cam in and uh, you know, got that stuff back on there. Now, I didn't worry about degreeing it because all that stuff is definitely the same and we never, never removed the uh, lower piece so the cam didn't change. Took the oil pan and I added a bung onto it for this right here. So this will be the oil heater and that way we can get the uh, engine of the temp, or get the oil temp a little bit without having to run it as much and get uh, as much heat in the actual uh, uh, heads and everything. I still have to run a little bit because we have to get some heat in the trans. Uh, but if we keep it on ATF, it's not as temperature sensitive. But you know, who knows? I may end up putting one of those in the uh, trans fan too. We'll see. I kind of would like to to do that, but uh, I uh, I don't know for sure. But anyways, I'm gonna get the pan on that thing. Here we go. Uh, oil pans on. Uh, get the new oil filter. I always put oil in it before the actual startup. So I take it back off. Run that little magnet right there. I can't say it makes a difference, but we've had really good luck with the engine, so I just keep it on there. Usually I'll change the oil, and then I'll forget that I took it off, and then after I get the diaper back on, I will see it stuck to the K-member. So I gotta take the diaper back off, or sag it down and get it on there. The oil temp sensor, it's over there. Um, like I said, we'll use that to heat the oil up before the first pass, uh, you know, and, and, or you know, one of those days it lights out where you sit for 10 hours, or no mercy or any other event. So uh, get the oil pump on whenever I get the new one and we should be good to go uh, with that. Hopefully the machine shop will be done with the heads next week. That'd be phenomenal. And then I can uh, pick those up and get that, uh, you know, ready to go which I you know I, I still got order head gaskets from a uh, Jamie at enemies everywhere racing uh, they used to be you know enemies racing uh, Australia and now they're enemies I'm sorry they used to be enemies everywhere and now they're enemies racing Australia we got it backwards uh, you know different change different uh, different team but you know same great parts and even better now uh, so that's where uh, we're at now though um, I guess Tuesday night I'll get back on the wiring. My back's coming along pretty good, so I should be able to lean over the car for a while uh, and uh, hopefully make a little bit of progress on that. Um, and I'm about to ask John if I can steal his label, label maker so I can do it right. But appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe.